tonight. Special response units, their controversial past, and their use now under new scrutiny. Next thing you know, we see a, a police car, and then we see a jump out. Tonight, CBS4 investigates. Are specialized police units fighting street crime necessary? Last week, the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell looked at these specialized police units and the new scrutiny they face in the wake of Tyree Nichols' death. In Memphis, it was the Scorpion Unit disbanded days after five officers were charged with second-degree murder in Nichols' death. But the reality is these units exist in communities all across the country, even right here in South Florida. CBS First Chelsea Jones went digging to find out what they are and how they impact our community. She joins us now with a look at specialized police units. Police agencies tell CBS 4 News these teams are designed for what's called crime suppression. They say they are designed to fight violent crime and keep the streets safe. But some who live in these neighborhoods where they work say the teams do more harm than good. We've learned that while these units can be beneficial, they can also be dangerous. And here in Miami, they have an ugly past. The people in the neighborhoods where we work call us the jump out boy. When they see one of us within 10 to 20 seconds, they're going to see 30 more of us. The year is 2000 and this is TNT. Also known as Miami Dade's tactical narcotics team. By and large, this unit works in the most volatile neighborhoods in Dade County. We work with the most dangerous and unpredictable people. Okay, I got you. I'm pulling up around behind you now. That was then. This is now. They, they pull up on you at a high rate of speed, slam on brakes, put the car in park, and literally jump out on you. Maybe sometimes guns are drawn. A modern day jump out boys is what 21 year old Christopher Wilbon says he and his friends deal with on a weekly basis. He says they aren't in uniform and they're not in marked police cruisers. These cars are your average cars, maybe a Toyota Camry or a Nissan Altima. And they're, they're, they're tinted darkly. The windows, you, you can't see in, and I'm pretty sure they can see out. Wilbon lives in Goulds, a community in southwest Miami-Dade. It's your average neighborhood, you know, you got, you got some good, you got some bad, but you know, home. You know, just going to the park, playing, playing for youth football teams, things of that sort. He tells me at 16, his experience in his neighborhood changed. Stop, don't move. Um, where's your ID? What do you have on you? Let me search you for no specific reason at all. Maybe just I'm walking down the street. We looked at Wilbon's record. Over the last few years, he's been pulled over many times by Miami-Dade police for traffic infractions. And then there's a weapon charge of which he was not convicted, but given probation. What were you charged with? Um, concealed carrying of a firearm. Is that still on your record? Yes, it is. So as a young black man, you know, I'm sure you want to do things with your future. How does it feel to have to now deal with that? I have to explain that to everyone. I have to, you know, they, they check for that. As hard as it already is, that really creates another problem for me. We asked Miami-Dade police multiple times for an interview about the operations and results of their specialized units. They declined. What they did share with us is that their department is home to over 50 specialized police units that have been created to address specific community concerns, voice to their officers, community advocates, local leaders, county commissioners, and mayor. They say these units were established to address the crimes that have affected residents and visitors to include but are not limited to homicides, robberies, narcotics, domestic violence, environmental crimes, illegal dumping, weapons violations, and active shooters. Miami Police Department sent us their list of 12 specialized units they say are used to address various issues their officers see day to day, focusing on certain crimes and or problem areas in order to create valuable solutions to tackle these situations at hand. Next thing you know, we see a, a, a police car and then we see a jump out. Jump out, a term that was coined back in the 90s after Miami PD's street narcotics unit. The group was riddled with controversy after officers were found guilty of misconduct and questions about the unit's effectiveness emerged. It was disbanded in 97. Former police chief George Kalina was a part of the department when Jump Out Boys was in operation. It was not only acceptable, but you know, those officers were admired. The issue? 
Kalina says they're dangerous and not a good policing technique. He says back in the day, who was chosen to work in these units were measured by standards he says don't work today. Back in the 90s, when you looked at someone to go into a unit like that, you typically just looked at, is this a person that makes a lot of arrests? Oh, okay, we should get that person, right? You were just looking for the officer that was naturally aggressive and wanted to work. So I peg you with this question, are specialized police units fighting street crime necessary? I think it depends. I, I really do. There's many circumstances where it is not necessary. Nowadays, you need to look at what is their disciplinary background, their profile, right? What skill sets do they bring other than just aggressive policing? There's also the other side to this, the officers. They're face to face with danger every day, every shift. By you jumping out, you have to be aggressive. You have very little time uh, to make sure that that person doesn't take an overt action where you have to now harm them because you're protecting yourself. But the danger is always present. Oh, oh. In Pompano Beach, deputies were faced with a suspected bank robber. They say flashed a gun at them. Deputies opened fire. The man died. One of the deputies involved was a part of the Broward Sheriff's Viper team, the department's street crime unit. This incident remains under investigation by Florida's Department of Law Enforcement, but it's another example of the dangers on the streets and why some say deputies need plenty of training and oversight. The problem is that if you don't manage it properly, it turns into something very ugly. So there's value there. It just needs to be managed. There needs to be supervision. There needs to be audits. There needs to be training. Mm -hmm. All of these things cost money. Budgets are limited. So if you can't do it right, then you shouldn't do it. We've contacted every law enforcement agency included in this report, Miami-Dade, City of Miami, and the Broward Sheriff's Office. We wanted to hear from them to talk about the purpose of these units, the dangers they face, and learn how effective they were. Again, they all declined. So what's the solution? It's unclear, but Kalina says some of these groups have been rebranded to go into the community and mend the relationship between police and the people they serve. I'm Chelsea Jones, CBS 4 News Tonight.